Right, this is recording now, so I'll just uh, get cracking. Yep. Hi guys, welcome back to another Capo Starkey, Capo Starkey Rugby podcast. Today I've got Murray Anderson from Blissful, Rug- Blissful Rugby HQ. Um, I'll put a link to um, that uh, in the description below. Murray, of course, has been on with me before. Uh, welcome back, mate. How are you doing? I'm all right. Thank you for having me back. Yeah, yeah, it was a pleasure. I enjoyed the last one we did. Uh, it went down very well. Um, I think we're just going to be basically just chatting about the Lions squad, what we think of it, and see where it goes from there. So uh, start off, of course, eight Scots. Proud of that as well? Yeah, definitely. I thought, I think we discussed it the previous time. It was like, I wanted like eight or nine Scots in it, but I didn't think Gats was going to give us that, and he did. So fair play to him. I can't complain. Yeah, same here, same here. I mean, I, I thought I thought it would be six because I wasn't sure if um, if uh, Rory Sutherland was going to be fit enough in time because uh, apparently he's still um, a bit touch and go for the in time for the Japan game, and I wasn't yeah. sure given uh, how Xander Fagerson's discipline can be sometimes. Like, I wasn't sure if Gatlin was going to favour him and um, because of that. But um, you know, so I was I was a bit surprised by those two. The rest I, I predicted all all would go. Um, but yeah, I mean, mainly just Ali Price because obviously Ben Young's pulled out. But that's yeah. that's what I thought. I thought we'd get six, but get eight. I'm, I'm very happy with that. I think it's weird though, because like I th- when I did my final squad written up the morning before the announcement, I thought I was like, right, I need one more tight end. It's gonna be Xander Fagerson or it's gonna be Thomas Francis. I couldn't decide. I flipped the coin, took Thomas Francis, put him in, and didn't get it. So typical fashion that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it happens. Um, I wasn't actually sure if uh, Thomas Francis was go because um, I know there's a few um, in um, you know there's a few Welsh fans who don't think he's good enough and um, yeah. like just not weren't really sure about him. So I was a bit like you know, and I don't rate him as the greatest player, greatest tight head of the options available either. So I wasn't sure if he would go, but yeah, I mean, like glad, I'm glad, like you know, that both uh, Xander and Rory are going. Um, a bit disappointed to see uh, Johnny Gray not there, though, or Richie Gray, or, or Jamie Ritchie as well. I think Johnny Gray's been the most hard done by in that scenario. I think Jamie Ritchie was in for a shout, but the back rows that got suspect, it's unformidable. Like it's not, there's no harm done to Jamie Ritchie. He's still young enough, so I could always get on the next one. But yeah, I think Johnny Gray's in a tough one. I think I talked about it in a video on my account earlier that no disrespect to Johnny Hill because I'm a big Exeter Chiefs fan but on an international level it's like they picked the wrong Johnny in a way if that makes sense yeah yeah um, no I, uh, I, I to be honest I didn't think Johnny Gray would make it um, I just thought like he'd be probably outside James Ryan but it does surprise me that Johnny Hill's been picked ahead of him Um I think maybe that uh, 60 meter kick he made against Bristol <laughs> might have had a factor in it. Uh, um, I, 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 I don't know. It's just, I just like kind of a, a left field opinion there, but still, still like, it's just kind of a, a bit of a surprise that, um, you know, sort of he's gone for a uh, hill over Gray. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, in an ideal world, you would have took both based on like Cobb form as well. But I don't know. I feel like James, uh, the James Ryan one was a tricky one. Like, I got asked that earlier as well what did I think and I think it's just Gats doesn't obviously see something special in him which is fine it's fair enough it's a bit rubbish on his end because he was like consistently getting starts for Ireland and Leinster and I do think he is going to be like an Ireland captain one of these days but so that's kind of a tough pill to swallow but then again like Jamie Ritchie he is quite young so there's always that next tour it's not like this is his last saloon perhaps so definitely not that no, absolutely not. Um, you think maybe like with James Ryan, it was to do with his um, because I think it's similar with with Sexton with his head knocks uh, recently, and he came back against um Lara Shell at the weekend. He didn't look as sharp as you'd expect him as you he 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 normally is on on good form. I think that was maybe a, a factor as well there. Don't know, but the thing about Sexton, it turns out it wasn't actually the HIAs that was the issue, according to Gats. He said that wasn't his problem; it was more of his durability, and I found out that Sexton hasn't played three consecutive games in a row since 2018. Um, wow. Um, <laughs> he did, in the Six Nations, though, he did play three games, Italy, Scotland, and, I mean, I, 
I suppose if you want to count out that you know there was a there was a a weekend break in between those as well. So yeah, I mean, if you yeah. want to get really technical there, I suppose yeah, you've got a point. So I think it was like it came up. I was like the last ones he played. It was against like Connaught Dragons and Edinburgh, consistent mm-hmm. like consecutively. And I'm like, that's three years ago, or maybe even like three and a half years ago, depending on when it was. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's incredible for someone of his stature to not play. Like that consecutive for that long, it's quite troubling. I don't know if it was because of injury or like the select or the like the rotation selection because Ross Byrne gets a lot of game time as well. Mm-hmm. It's probably a combination just because uh, obviously jo- um, Johnny Sexton has picked up his fair share of head knocks over the past few years. And I think it is just, it's kind of getting to the point where you just, you just, you have to think like, okay, I think that ties in with the durability factor as well. Like, you know, how long is he going to go before like he gets another head knock and he has to sit out again? Um, and that I think that obviously would have been in Gatlin's thinking as well, especially going um, up against South Africa. And as we all know, they don't exactly um, hold back at all when it comes to tackling or when it comes to uh, targeting opposition players. Um, yeah. So... So um, yeah, I think those were those were all factors as well. I know there's a few um, of uh, those on the Irish media side who are um, a bit um, great about that, but I think you have to say from a, a health and safety point of view, he's, I mean, he's probably made the right decision because from, I mean, I don't I don't like to get too judgmental of this because obviously it's uh, someone else's um, personal life, someone else's choices in life, but but um, you have to also say like the fact you know Johnny's got a young, he's got a young family as well and um, I mean you'll you'll know your, yourself with that like yeah. you know so that how important your health is for the longevity of um, you know sort of being there for your family and we've seen we're seeing cases now in relation to those those ex players who've had concussions in the past like the effects it's having on their family so I think that's maybe a factor of that coming into play as well you know yeah no I think I get I get exactly where you're coming from and. Again, like you said, it is like it is his life, it is his decision and all that. But mm-hmm. I've, I've always said like so like Johnny Sexton is a legend. There's no doubt about that. But I want to see him like when he retires, I want to see him in like a coaching role or like on BBC on B or something like as a pundit and being an ana- analysis and not not like wheelchair bound or like forgetting things. Like, nobody wants to see it, regardless of who they are. But I think now's the time to start winding down a wee bit, maybe. And I think the fact that he's not been in the Lions squad might just be that little... Because he's not signed on till through till 2023. He's mm-hmm. only till next season. And I don't know if that's another thing because of the age or the head knocks or, or they're just seeing how he goes and then they might renew his contract after that or I don't know. But the rest of them, like Ian Henderson and all that, signed on till 2023. So that's... You get, you know what I mean? It sounds like yeah. he's kind of like getting left behind in a way. Yeah, I mean, there's also a lot of other factors co- to consider in that as well. The fact that uh, if he does go through to 2023 World Cup, Cup he'll be 38 by then. Um, and whereas Ian Henderson's obviously a bit younger. I think he's um, he's 29, going to be 30 later this year. Uh, and there's other players who signed on. Keith Earls aside, maybe, who are like at the age where they're probably at the, the peak age, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah. And like Johnny Sexton's like clearly he's he's past that peak age now, and he just it's, it's, it's a case of like a year at a time really with him. And again, for you know his his, lo- his long term health, you gotta think. Even though obviously the stuff I know there's like links being put with concussion and dementia, it's not as conclusive yet as I I don't think it's as clu- conclusive yet as um, it could be. I still think there needs to be a lot more research on that. But I mean, to me, that's a separate a bit of a separate issue. Um, yeah. at the moment but yeah just um yeah no I get I get what you mean um like you know sort of just again I like long long term I mean a lot of Irish fans I've spoken to they don't see him going to the next World Cup and I mean he goes at 38 you know good credit to him but the thing is also um that's another thing on the positive side from his end like just how he freakishly manages to keep himself fit how despite all the bangs he does take and just how you know, he keeps he keeps um, being able to play at a very high level. Um, you know, that's all got to be you know sort of I think taken into the equation from the rugby side. But yeah, from the health side, I think yeah, Gatland um, has made the right decision, as I said. Yeah, no, like he is a definite like he is a phenomenal like workhorse, and he's always eager to always get 
fight uh, like fit and healthy again, but it's like he almost rushes into it. Like he says he's fine, but the body's not like it's obviously a mental mm. and like like he's it's inspiring, like he's always up for it. But it, like again, like at what cost? Yeah. No, exactly. And um, yeah, the thing is also, I mean, as much as we can judge it, like, you know, so just sitting, talking to each other and folk can, you know, get on their keyboards and say X, Y, and Z, as we all know yeah. everyone does. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, it is down to him, his family and his, his doctors as well. And yeah. you just have to, I mean, take that into account. The fact Gatlin's not picked him. And again, it's, it has to be appreciated just how higher in, because like, Test match rugby is like as, as the intense level as you get. The Lions is, I mean, it's like if you listen to the stuff like Savi McGeek and Jim Telfer, etc., have all said over the last however many years, the Lions is the next step up from that for a British and Irish player. Like you've, and a lot of factors obviously come into that. The fact you're four nations coming together, you've only got a few weeks to actually bond. Um, yeah. It's not a case of like, you know, you get to know each other a bit and then you meet in the international stage and maybe there's one or two new faces in the international stage every so often, but generally for the most part, you still know each other and you know the coach quite well. This is like, you know, again, four different countries coming together and they have to get together and bond within a, a, a short few weeks and be ready to play um, what, um, one of the three um, biggest nations in the Southern hemisphere. So, you know, I totally, I, it's a totally like, uh, that's where I get where the level up is with the lines. You get what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, it is, it is really the pinnacle. And I think it was Sir Ian McGeekin that said, like, the jersey changes you. It brings something out of you in a player that you didn't know you had. Mm -hmm. I'd like to find out one day. but <laughs> Yeah, again, no, I get where he's gone from the emotional side. And obviously, um, you know, Ian McGeekin from both both as a player and a coach, like, you know, he's got that deep connection with the Lions. Um, Jim Telfer, very similar. Um, Warren Gatlin, more on the coaching side. Like, you know, as much as we can have his have our criticisms as of how he's done certain things on previous Lions tours, especially yeah. for us Scots. Um, you know, he's, he's, he has, you know, the, the pet, the reputation is still there. He's, he's um, taken the Lions to a series win in Australia, a series draw in New Zealand and going to South Africa, which I say the Lions have an excellent chance, chance at, because again, with South Africa, they've not played, they've not been together for 18 months now. So, um, yeah. You know they're they're going to need. I mean, I, I do hope they are able to get at least one or two tests before the test series. So they can get themselves up to near the best level they can be, because then that would be like for a cracking series. I think. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I think that the fact that the pro for the Rainbow Cup on the South African end has now been sorted, and they're getting games, and then obviously your bigger players are already in the Premiership and over in France anyway, so they're still going. And Andre Pollard's back now. So that's, that's big news, but RG Snyman's took a setback. So it's always like, yeah, and then no, and then so on and so forth. But I think South Africa's got something up their sleeve. I think they'll be ready. I think they're keeping quite hush-hush about it, which is kind of exciting and worrying at the same time. So Yeah, absolutely. And you just uh, think of the players that maybe are not being considered now. Like, like, you know, so they just seem to be a producer factory line of like massive big bastards up front. They just players who could just like, you know, when they tackle you, they don't just tackle you. They just look to absolutely smash you into next yeah. week. And it just, I mean, you see some of the players that are in the premiership, like those um, two, two guys that are at Leicester right now, Leinenberg and Vice, like, you know, sort of, they were absolutely, uh, you know, sort of not knock it. Absolutely. They're absolutely like, you know, smashing through yeah. um, some of the opponents they play for. Um, there's other, um, Leinenberg at um, La Rochelle as well, very good player. Um, there's a, there's one or two others in France and England as well that are going to be uh, definitely in contention for um, pushing for their their place in the South African team. Uh, as you said, with him, Henry Pollard, that would be a big boost for him if they can get him fit in time. Um, and then I think I think actually they'll be more or less close to similar to what they were like um, at the World Cup with maybe one or two wee changes. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, because to them it's it is still a, like a, a higher level because it's the Lions, but it will just be like sort of like calling it up as normal. So like like a normal international team, like you'd have like your regulars and then like one, two, maybe three new boys, but same coach. So the majority of the players would know how the coach works, like you previously said. So that would obviously come to an advantage of like South Africa because they're used to the coach and his style of play, whereas the Lions are just having to form like in like a couple of weeks 
get get it all sorted, learn new plays, learn new drills, get chemistry, work in and yeah, it's always interesting. I love the line. I love the concept of the lines myself. I, I just I like the fact where it's like four nations who battle it out every February and March, and then they've all to come together and form this like unstoppable team and beat one of the big boys in the Southern Hemisphere. I just I just love that concept. I just think whoever came up with that, absolute legend. Yeah, I agree. Um, I just remember it was just um, New Zealand and South Africa for a while up until 1989 when they started allowing uh, touring to Australia as well. So yeah, no, it's a, it is like a great concept. It is a it is a special thing. Like you, especially when you just hear some of the historic historic stories of like you know when you listen to Willie John McBride talk about it, or um, oh. you know, there's there, there's many other examples like Phil Bennett, Gareth Edwards, etc. You know, Ian McGeek himself, um, and Andy Irvin, all, all that from a Scottish point of view, those two, of course. Yeah. Just like, you know, sort of just like, you know, sort of the experience they get of it. And just, I mean, I understand it's a lot, a lot has changed since the amateur era. Um, the amateur era where they, they got together for like two or three months before the test yeah. and they had to beat uh, South Africa or New Zealand. And now it's changed, like they're, it's condensed down into a few weeks. This tour being probably the shortest tour there's ever been. Um, with a couple of the fixtures still, with obviously the pandemic right now, still not sure as to whether a couple of them are going ahead. As far as I know, they've still got the green light, but yeah, the times we live in, like there's a lot that could change. So yeah, because I've obviously, as you know, I've got tickets to the Lions Japan game. Yeah, and I, and no, I've got I got an email from the Lions last week, I think it was, and it wasn't asking for like I could ask for a refund or that. It was nothing that bad, so. Um, fingers Thank crossed. Yeah. Um, but it was more like, look, we're very uncertain of how many people can go in. We're working our best with uh, Scottish rugby, the Scottish government, and general health organisations. Mm -hmm. So they're going to keep me posted, which I thought seemed very positive in a way. It wasn't like, like it's not happening. There's your money back, sort of thing. So, and with the fact that Twickenham's hosting the European Cup Challenge and Champions Cup finals. For ten thousand people over a weekend, I'm kind of opt not in the end of May. Lines isn't until the end of June, so I'm a bit optimistic there. So, yeah, with the with the English one, it's weird though because you would think um, with the fact that both teams are French, uh, they could have maybe moved it to um, uh, I don't know Stade de France or, or Marseille, um, you yeah. know, so sort of just and and still keep the same seat allocations that are already there. Uh, understand maybe traveling wise for some folk it might be a bit different because there there are a few like a minority probably but there are a few folk with that who are um like you know sort of aren't supporters of either of the two teams playing and yet they're coming from other countries um so that's yeah possibility but i think you still get the vast majority of them being uh, la rochelle or toulouse fans so you, you know they could still get in france in the current climate that is so that, that kind of doesn't make sense, but I get, I get where you're coming from, like, you know, with uh, regards to, fingers crossed, um, we can get fans to the Murrayfield game. I would have liked to have seen some fans being allowed to go to South Africa, but, um, yeah, sadly, that doesn't look like it's going to be happening. I think we'll have enough fans over there anyway. It won't be the Sea of Red. I, like, we all know that. It's not going to be the big Sea of Red that you traditionally see at Lions Tour. It's going to be a very different tour. But I think we're still going to get like the fans in. You're still going to get a lot of noise. South African fans are like one of the most passionate fans in world rugby, Tell especially when especially when they're world champions and the Lions come and they just oh uh, you just you can't mix it any better. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, again, with regards to whether Lion fans can travel, that's gonna, that's a difficult one because it's like how can you allocate fairly uh, tickets? It's Again, like a lot of still up in the air about about that. And at the moment, as far as I know, they're still not allowed to go over to South Africa. Um, but again, it's, it's hard to see because a lot a lot of changes right now, and uh, like you know, a lot can change in the space of a few weeks. But I mean, I'm doubt I doubtful. Well, um, if there are any who are going, there'll be a large base at all. So it's, that that would be a shame. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's um. But also, I think I think the players right now are, are kind of used to not playing in front of crowds, so they'll that that hopefully shouldn't affect them too much. 
But uh, if South Africans are allowed a, a, a portion of fans in, that might make things a little bit different. Yeah, it's, it should always be tougher going away for a series anyway, mm-hmm. regardless if there's fans or limited fans or whatever. There should always be that extra like urge, and especially with South Africa because they've got the like how out, high altitude as well. Mm. So that's always been apparently that's always been a big like test as well within itself. Mm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then um, especially with them um, regards to some of the players' lines picked in relation to altitudes, and um, obviously, like you know, sort of the like, number eight's going, like Jack Conan, a strong ball carrier, and um, same with uh, same with that Sam Simmons, albeit both can be a bit versatile at times. Yes, we're getting <laughs> we're getting on to that, mate. I was just gonna uh, go on to who the Lions have picked um, overall, even though we touched on it very briefly. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, so, well, we'll talk about Sam Simmons first then. Are you absolutely delighted as a Chiefs fan he's going? Can tell yes. by the smile on your face. <laughs> it's been hard not to smile. Like, obviously, like, when the squad got announced and all the Scottish boys got announced, I'm like, yes, and I felt like pride and all that. But see when it came up, like, going to forwards and X, Y, and Z, and then Sam Simmons, XR Chiefs, I was like... Come on, get in there. And I got like really like up for it like it was a game. But I just think I've always said it doesn't like even to you and Messenger or whatever, I've always said to like if you train hard, you earn like a place in the team, if you do well in the team, you get into your national team and on a good year, it's the lines of the World Cup. And somehow Sam Simmons has missed that bit, <laughs> not through his own fault. It's because Eddie Jones has just been awkward about it, but like he's missed that key part and everyone said that that might have been an issue for him and Warren Gatlin said definitely was not an issue so I'm happy I am happy to see him I've been I got asked this morning do I think he's going to be starting for the Lions or like more of a super sub and I kind of had to give like a safe answer because I don't I don't like being biased in my videos because I try and get like I'll do it it's fine (laughs) (laughs) I've I've been doing all right so far apart from the Scotland (laughs) <laughs> once yesterday, but um, so I got asked, like, would Sam Simmons be a starter as a lion or a super sub? And I was, I could see him starting against like Japan or even like the other warm up game. I don't, it's not been confirmed yet, but like USA keeps coming in the mix, so I could see him starting there. And I was, and how good would it be? And like the series itself against South Africa, and you've got 15 20 minutes left of the game, and you bring on fresh legs, Sam Simmons for a five meter line out mm-hmm. like it, it's written in the stars for like for that to happen for instant impact but uh, no like i am really chuffed for sam i think he was the one that if you were going to pick one like bolter i think that it had to be him but like, you just look at what he's done this last year mm-hmm. as an extra chief it just the, there was a few other names that came up and it was unlucky for them there was one i was pushing for was recently, but and it was never to happen. But oh well. Who was who was the one you're pushing for? I was pushing for Danny Kerr as the third. Oh really? Okay. Um, yeah. So I had Ali Price. I had Connor Murray. I did pick Thomas Williams at one point, and then I was like, and I kept I kept flipping and flopping. I had like so I was like right Connor Murray definite. Ali Price is definite. I was gonna put Ben Youngs. Obviously, he dropped out because he's expecting his third child, which is fair enough. I get that. And then I was like, right, it's going to be Thomas Williams or Danny Kerr. And I kept tossing it up, like, yeah, like you can bring Thomas Williams off the bench and he's a, like a whippet scrum half. So he brings a bit more pace to it. And then I look back at the highlights over this like past like two months and Danny Kerr, like, age, he's just like a fine wine. It is, he's just threw back the clock. And there's a reason he's got like, the amount of caps he's got for England because he, he was the starting nine for a while and I don't know if Eddie Jones just wanted to try something different but I think, personally I think he fell out of favour with Eddie because um, 2018 Six Nations when Ben Youngs got injured he was put in and he didn't really excel himself then and he's really not been in the considered for England since but you're yeah. right in that this season like he's just been <clears throat> playing possibly arguably some of the best rugby of his career in the yeah. twilight, twilight years, you could say, and yeah, um, again, Eddie, Eddie doesn't seem to favour him at all. Even though I think he picked, um, at the same time, this is the same man who picked Richard Wigglesworth. Not that Richard Wigglesworth's a bad player, but he picked him when he was like thirty, 
five thirty six or something like that. Yeah, exactly. And um, so, yeah, I think, uh, um, I think there was a big issue as well. I think it was before the World Cup, and Danny Kerr made like a pop at Willie Hines, and it was kind of like, "Oh, you're not good enough to represent like your your birth country." And oh, that's kinda... a yeah, that's a that's another. Sorry, Murray, that's another wee thing. Is that Willie Hines is a year older than Danny Kerr as well? So, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and then. So, and it's no disrespect to the, the boy that they've used now, that Dan, uh, Dan Robson. Like, he is a good player for Wasp, but yeah, I think it was Squid Rugby. I could be wrong there, but I think I've seen it on YouTube. And it was like, yes, Dan Robson's a good player, but every time he plays for England or comes on for England, it's like he's scared, which is, I understand, like, it is a big deal, like, representing your country on that level. But as a professional player, you'd have to. Do what you do. There's a reason you've been picked. Do that sort of thing. If you get, yeah. Yeah, no, I get what you mean. I mean, the thing is with, with Dan Robson, I have to also kind of take into consideration the fact that uh, uh, about two years ago, he had a really bad injury. It kept him out for the best part of a year. And um, then he came back from that and did well. And I think, yeah, but when, when he's been like England's second choice this year, yeah, I agree, I agree with you. He has looked just like the pale shadow of some of the things he can do for when he plays for wasps um yeah. and yeah so uh yeah that's that's fair enough assessment of him uh, but you know on form you have to say danny danny care has been uh like um chalk and cheese above, above him definitely uh but we're, worth going back to sam simmons though do you think um there's a small part of gatlin that's going to and um, eddie um because the fact obviously eddie jones doesn't pick him for england which is absolutely amazing just to start with you think there's a small gar- part of gatlin that's picked him because of you know that or yes <laughs> yes exactly yeah me and my uh me and one of my mates spoke about this on our way to training last night like that is just a big massive fuck you eddie isn't it it is <laughs> And then my, my, my mate made the joke of, you know what's going to happen, isn't it? I was like, Sam Simmons still won't get picked for England. And that, that's probably the, the punchline. Like, Eddie Jones was like, oh, yeah, you're a lion. Right. I still don't care. I really, that, I don't know about that, because I think um, the fact that the RFU had that big review with um, uh, Eddie Jones, I was, expecting them, I was expecting them to keep him on afterwards, but after this recent Six Nations. Because the thing is, like, as much as we can criticise him and as much as he can be provocative in the media with some of the stuff he says, he's not an idiot, Eddie Jones. He's a like he's no. a damn good rugby coach and you think he's going to definitely learn from that. So if Simmons is the Form 8 going into like the Autumn Internationals, I think you ha- you'll have to you'll have to at least like, you know, look at him and say like, you know, right. But, and even especially if he comes out of this Lions series and he has an absolute belter and he ends up becoming the first choice 8, I still think Falatau is just ahead of him with regards yeah. to being a test starter. But, you know, if Simmons has a good tour, like like with any player, of course, like, you know, so then there's every chance they could come out a bit like test starter, test hero, and you never know. And that would be that would be the ultimate Eddie Jones just, you know, sort of just feeling embarrassed to the point where I just think, I've got to pick this guy. Like, you know, I can't, I can't ignore him any longer. I think there's a few good players that Eddie Jones needs to pick just to even just give that England squad a a little bit fresher, like mm-hmm. obviously, like as Scotland fans, you don't want England to do it, but they are like they are a bloody good team when mm-hmm. they're running full goal. Yeah, and it's nothing against the Stars and Spurs. I get like it's not like their fault that they haven't been playing. They're starting to get games now, but I feel like it's a bit too late in the day to start giving them like the regular yeah. game time. And yet, five of them are on this Lions tour. So, I mean, I wouldn't have picked Elliot Daly. It's not again. It's nothing against Elliot Daly. He is a, like on his day. He is a great player, and he can cover wing, center, and fullback. And he has got a lengthy boot on him if it came upon it. But I'm just like right now, like really, he has done next to nothing in the Six Nations. He couldn't tackle. Like I think it was the Italy game of all games, and Monte Ioane just didn't even dummy him or step him. It just kind of like. Through a sh- like even like a hint of a shoulder, mm. and Elliot Daly's like, well, like, where am I going? Like, what do I do? I'm like, tack on, go low. If you mm. even if you slow him down, like, there's going to be like somebody else to drive drive him out, mm. and he just kind of was like caught in two minds, and then, and I keep getting told that oh he's playing really well for Saracens, and I'm like, yeah, but no disrespect, it's the championship. Yeah. They're not all professional teams there. Yeah, yeah, I. 
Well, that's the thing. I think that comes to a bit of bias as well because I've, uh, I've got um, a couple of mates who are Saracens fans and uh, they're saying, oh, you know, Saracens are now battering teams after that um, wonderful start against the Cornish Pirates um, like in the Championship. They're now, um, you know, sort of battering every team. It was always to be expected that was going to happen, again, yeah. as you say, because of professional teams and that. And you, and when you see, like, you know, stuff about, like, oh, Raven, about, oh, how good the Saracens are players, it's like, again, it's the Championship. Like, you know... Sure, they're good players, but they're expected to be good players at that level. They're expected to, they're expected to win. It's like the real test will be coming, um, you know, against the bigger teams. And the thing is, though, that's where maybe you could argue Gatlin has it, got it kind of smart because you think, um, you know, if he has the ability with these players and he can get them back to the level we know they can play, um, as as good as they are, especially you know, sort of Maru Atoji, like as you know, is 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 world class, is world class when he's on top of his game, like um. Same with Jamie George, and you just think if you can get if you can get them to near that level, then you know they're going to be like you know sort of you know re- really really up for the series. You know, yeah. I mean, at Hooker, I was still I was still put Luke Cowan Dickey and Ken Owens ahead of Jamie George, but again, yeah. like with Simmons, if Jamie George can uh, really prove himself in the warm up games, he's got every chance of being that test side again. Personally, I, I didn't even pick Jamie George. To, uh, no, like, see, see, well, in my personal squad, I didn't pick him either. So, yeah. He, I don't even think he made the cut when it was a 41 man squad either. I didn't think I wrote him in. I think I still had like Ronan Kelleher or Rob Herring or maybe even George Turner at one point, but he kind of slipped off. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I don't know what it is about Jamie George. I just, he's just sort of there for me in a way. Yeah. Is it no? He's, the thing is, he, he is a he is an, an excellent scrummaging hooker, and if he's at his, his peak level, he's probably the best uh, scrummaging look, hooker the Lions could could have taken. But uh, this season, obviously, with you know Sars was not playing, he's not been at that level, and he he was quite rightly um you know shafted as the England first choice hooker during the Six Nations as well. Uh, Luke Cowan mm-hmm. Dickey's been playing far better, and I think actually Luke Cowan Dickey looks a far more rounded player than George. Anyway, in my opinion, so I've, I mean, I've been a big not just because I'm a Chiefs fan. <laughs> um, I, no, I have been a big fan because I always take like regardless of what team I support, I always take a step back and look at the players, mm. and I, I do highly rate Luke Kevin Dickey. He is just something quite special, like for a hooker, the runs he makes, the tackles he makes, and just like he is a quite an accurate thrower when it comes to the lineup as well. Just don't spit when you celebrate. I have seen that one too many times when he does it, and they're quite not. No, he's not spitting on opponents, and I think it did hit one. I think there was like, oh yeah, okay, was, like, maybe not. Yes, I yeah. Don't think it was like on purpose, but like I think he went like yes, and it was also light, and oh, oh mate, you need to stop that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe, may, yeah, maybe so. Actually, yeah, um, no, but I mean that's, that's the thing I like. I like about him is he does have a. A lot of variety about him. Like he got very good, very good hands as well for a front rower. Um, not that Jamie George has got bad hands in his peep, but I just think like Luke Hound Dickey seems to have that bit extra in that department. Yeah, and you know, he'd, I think he'd be an ex because that, that's the thing. I'm at the moment. I'm expecting um, Gatlin to keep Ken Owens as the first choice, and then you know Luke Hound Dickey coming on like in later in the game to be that mm, sort of explosive yeah. impact, maybe to you know, move the box around a little bit more, like, you know, sort of with, with because I think he's got a, a bit better foot footwork than the other two hookers and his yeah, offload awesome. as well as is there, is there. And, you know, that would give the, you know, something more to think about, I think, you know. Yeah, of course. Yeah, no, I get, totally get what you're meaning. Especially because, like, he's a lot more, obviously, like, fresh legs as well. That's yeah. always a big factor in any game. So, but I'm, I'm really happy that Hamish Watson's in that team as well. I'm just kind of going off course a wee bit, but... I'm happy for all the Scottish boys, but especially like I think the way that like, the order they announced it, and he was like, I'm sure he was like the last man. Yeah, well, uh, that's that's the thing. I'm not really sure about them announced it in alphabetical order. I have a preference for position, um, like they used to do. I think it was only like the last tour, 2017, when John Spencer did it and Jason Leonard's carried on that trend. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm not sure about that, but the fact that Watson's got. Like W's last name, you think, oh god, how I don't even he must have been I pricking never, himself. We must have been pricking ourselves up until then. I never even thought of it like that. I was just like I didn't click that it. it was like in alphabetical order. I was just sitting there going, mm-hmm, uh-huh. And then it was like, 
and Hamish Watson. Oh, thank God, I, I'm glad he's there. I'm I, I'm happy that like, Doohan's been proven that he's there. I'm happy that Finn got picked as 10. That was the big debate going into it. Was it going to be Finn or Sexton? Obviously, I always said Finn. Um, I, I always knew the question was going to be who's going with bigger. But that was yeah. never within doubt. It was always yeah. I mean, bigger and... Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a few weeks ago, I was um, I kind of like thinking, oh, it might, because I actually did think that um, with Gregor Townsend being the coaching team, he would have a bit of ability to persuade Gatlin to say, look, you've got to take Finn, Finn with you. Because the thing is with Finn Russell, like he can have his, his, he can have his moments, obviously, but, you know, you just think he's, he's one of the, you know, a few really special players. He's just got ability to turn a game like that. Yeah, he can do do something maverick like throw a majestic pass or like kick a a fabulous kick or like you know just pa- look like he's passed the ball. It's saying cut inside, then put a player through through a gap yeah. or something to set something up and just or his own footwork as well, which can which against South Africa with the big bruisers they have, they'd be you know he'd be keeping them on their toes a lot more than I think um, the other the other tens will be. And you know, so I think I think that's what I was thinking. Like Gatlin would be thinking, okay. This this guy's like got something about us, like you know, sort of, you know, he could win something like you know, like that, which would be, which is, I think, why he's why he's going. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, I, I forgot what I was going to say there. Sorry uh, about that. Right? Um, no, but I think um, I maybe sidetrack a little bit here. Um, I think bigger will still be the the test ten. Um, and I, I agree with you in form. I thought I, as I said, I did think um, initially bigger might be the the fly half that would be like the one to be shafted a bit because I did expect Farrell to go mainly just because he can play 10 and 12. Yeah. I would have taken him. Uh but um and uh like bigger but his form in the last few weeks for Northampton you just can't say this guy he, he can't be ignored like you know sir no. even, even I I have had my criticism of bigger in the past and of his temperament sometimes just have to say the way he's playing you know you, you can't ignore this guy he's got he's got to go now. Yeah. And I, I still think like, um, yeah, as you say, like it'll be bigger than somebody else. And I think bigger will be the test starter at 10. Uh, and but that, but that's the thing, like you'd have him at 10 and hopefully Finn on the bench to come, come off and like, you know, cause the box havoc in the last 20 minutes or so. Yeah, no, that would work. Well, I, so like it always says, like, oh, Finn's a bit risky and you don't really know what he's going to do. I'm like, Finn's a lot smarter than you think he is. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, he lets on. I don't know, I'll kick or I'll just throw this pass for fun. I'm like, no, no, he's like four, five yeah. phases ahead. Like, if you look at the Scotland-France game, mm-hmm. sure Hog got sent off. Yeah, look winding down the clock and he went for the drop goal. Mm-hmm. Granted, it did go wide, but the clock died right down. And then the next phase of play, France, I think, like got put into touch. So there's a line out. And, oh, by the way, Stuart Hogg's now on. I'm like, Finn's done that on purpose. Mm. Obviously, it would have been better if I went in because mm-hmm. then you get the extra three points. But like, like the fact that he's went for that, he's obviously known in his head. There's about a minute, just over a minute left till Hoggy comes back on. Mm-hmm. I've got to do something to absolutely kill that time. Or like you see it as I always make this joke. So like, if it's an advantage to like Rasson or Scotland, you almost see it in like Finn's eyes, like he's looking and like, like, just give me the ball and I'll do something because it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. But and like folk are like, oh, but that's too risky. And like, well, it's not because you've got the advantage. So you're coming yeah, back exactly, in. Exactly, exactly. And the fact that, or he he never does the same play twice. Mm-hmm. Yes, he does. How many cross kicks did he do attempt at Duhan over the Six Nations? Like, it only takes one of them to pay off. He done it with Blair Kinghorn against Italy. Mm-hmm. He, tur- he I think he teased it with Darcy Graham in the France game. Just like a wee chip through, and Darcy just got unlucky. Mm-hmm. But he's trying this this long whooping chip kick to one of the wingers, preferably Duhan, because he keeps saying stick to my inside. And Duhan replied with just pass me the ball and I'll run. So <laughs> you'll have to see stuff like that. And like Hoggy even said it himself, like you're in training, they'll do a simple play. Someday I'll make a like a mess of it. And Hoggy will be like, right, it's cool, we'll just do it again. And then Finn will go, nah, I've got it. And then a big like 30 yard open pass or a cross kick or whatever. And Hoggy's just like, I okay, that works. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, exa- exactly, and that's again, as I was saying, that's the thing, like you know, sort of that he does bring, like he that ability to 
to be unpredictable. And there's all this obsession, obviously, you're going up against the Springboks, like you've got like you know, and all this obsession of like, oh, we need physical players. And to be fair, like with regards to the the squad, but Gatlin has picked, there is a lot of physicality in there. Yeah. Um um, especially with like you know selections, of course, of um, of Aki and uh, and Co- and Conan, um, like are the bit most notable ones for me when it comes to physicality, uh, which were probably a bit bit more like outside picks to to the norm. Um, yeah. But you know, at the same time, you kind of think you got to get that balance. And Gatlin said himself, look, you know, so obviously we need to be phys- physically, we need to at least have parity with the box, but we need to have players who have that ability to actually play rugby and actually have that ability when you know the game's broken up a bit just to switch it on and like really capitalize on that and you know you can't and the thing is like you know this and New Zealand know this as well because when New Zealand are beating the box it hasn't been through like trying to take them on like pound for pound like smashing them constantly yeah. like you've got to show that variety that you can move them about a bit and you know keep them on their toes and keep them like you know under under stress at all time and ability yeah, to go wide when it's on I think I just think the fact that Sir Clive Woodward, like the only coach to win a World Cup with Northern Hemisphere team, was clamouring for months for Finn to start for the Lions. Mm. And obviously I'm all up for it. I think it will be bigger, like you said, but I do kind of, just for that little, like, because Finn's obviously a more, a very different player to bigger. Bigger's a bit more controlled. Mm-hmm. He can still do like, like a cross kick or like a lovely pass or that. But, I think Finn's just got a bit more finesse about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So. The only thing I think could count against Finn starting is he doesn't kick regularly for Racing. Um, obviously, Maxi Mashno does that um, yeah. there. So I think that's the only thing that could count against him starting in with relation to what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, so, but I mean, if you're wanting like a player who's going to keep the box guessing, keep them on their toes, and you know, with a bit of balance, maybe with I think with, it would be an actually excellent balance with Finn at ten and Robbie Henshaw as centre. Um, and Chris I, Harris. sorry, and Chris Harris. And I was going to say, and yeah, and I think that would be an excellent balance, Chris Harris and Hen Harris Henshaw like alongside each other. Um, you know, sir, but I mean, mainly in relation to 10, 12, or or e- even thirteen, if um Henshaw ends up playing thirteen, like that would be. Yeah. Like an excellent balance, someone who's a bit bit more of like someone who can keep the box guessing get versus someone who like has the skill set Henshaw has, but he also has the ability to break the gate to break the game line against anyone. And that would like really be a fantastic balance to have. And then you obviously you'd have Hoggy at fullback coming up and like you yeah. know, sort of causing them stress in that way. And then the wingers possibly do hand in one wing. I expect Anthony Watson to be on the other wing. Uh, maybe Reese Samet with them, um, yeah. like you know, maybe Reese Samet on the bench or have an outside chance. That would be, you know, I think a really good balance to have. Yeah, no, that would work. I, I do right. I do like Andy Watson. He has had pre- uh, previous Lions experience. I just when I got, I think I got asked yesterday or the day before, what would my starting Lions team be? And I called them power. I just call them power and speed. I want Duhan on one wing, and I want Lewis Reese Samet on the other. I just think even just once, just to see where it goes. Can do it against Japan, can do it against USA, do it against Sprint. Like just try it once. If it doesn't work, you don't have to do it again. I just think, especially like again with like right now, form's a big thing for me. Mm-hmm. And I think if you've got two wingers like that that are on form, with the likes of like Finn controlling it to somebody like their style, like, I could see Reese Summit and Finn working like clicking very well. Yeah, no, I mean, the thing is with Reese Dammit, I think <clears throat> the thing is, like, that maybe makes me think he could, it could hinder his starting spot in the in the Lions. I think he will, he it's possibly could still make the 23. Um, is that Gatlin has said he's not quite the finished article yet, which is fair enough. He's only 20 year olds, but you just look at him and think the way he plays, like, maybe defensively he's not been tested as yet as much as he could be, but he just yeah. like looks like, you know, when he has the ball, he has the ball, he's, um, you know, you feel like something was something's gonna happen um, when he's off the ball and in attack. He's always looking for work, and also yeah. like even even like you know, there's a couple of kicks he made, one against Scotland, and there's a couple against France as well in the Six Nations, notably where he, like kicked him behind. He just shows like I think he's really switched on up there. Like you know, he yeah, just cool. looks like he has a very good rugby rugby brain on him, and he knows how to like read the plays very well. And you just think like someone like I mean. I think Gatlin was never going to ignore him. You just think, you know, 
he's a, he's a kid who's he's got like you know a, a natural rugby ability and brain about him. I mean, yeah. but, I mean the fact obviously he's only twenty, going to be twenty one uh, later this year. I think he's now he's not going to be like you know sort of um, the absolute finished article yet, but he's well, he's no. definitely well on his way to be. I mean, he like he just said like he's twenty years old and he's on his first line so this year. Mm. There's easy there's with obviously without injuries or form slipping away or anything, there's no reason why he can't do three, maybe even four tours after this. Poss- possibly, possibly. Obviously, um, he's, al- he's already getting compared to like Shane Williams, and it's obviously a bit too quick, but you, you never know. I, I think he's a bit different to Shane Williams and that Shane Williams was like sort of the small, nifty player, like with a big, mm-hmm. foot, great footwork. Um, Reece Zamet's obviously a lot, a um, fair bit taller than Shane was uh, as a player, um, and I think, yeah, I mean that's, I think that's just mainly the big, the biggest um, difference I can see with him. Um, I think, uh, Re- I think actually already Reece Zamet has got a better kick on him than Shane did as well. So that's yeah, uh, no, that part is, that is quite a bit he's got on, and obviously he knows how to chip and chase as Scottish fans know that a bit too well, <laughs> but. <laughs> No, nah, like it's fine, and obviously, like there'll probably be banner between the two of them on the camp about that. So, and then again, like I've like how I said, like Finn and Reece Samet would click well, I think, because Hoggy's got that experience, and now he's captain, so he's got leadership skills as well. I think he'll really help like Reece Samet, and obviously Duhan knows him, and him and Anthony Watson know each other quite well. So I think it's just it's a very well mixed squad, like between like experience. And like youth or like form, really, and I think that's what we've been needing for a long time in a line squad. Absolutely. Um, one winger we haven't actually mentioned yet, really, who's going as well, Josh Adams. Um, that's the thing that I think like could maybe hinder uh, Duan starting the first test is his defence, and it's. Yeah. I think it's easy to. I think we have to be fair and say Josh Adams as a defender and under the high ball is. He's just better than Duhan is in that department, and yeah, you know, and we know as we know with the with the the box and like they rely a lot on their forward power and they rely a lot on them um, getting territory and like their ability to really put teams under pressure with their kick chase, um, yeah. and that's maybe where you think like as I know for the sake of the team, Josh Adams might be a better shout there. What are your thoughts there? No, no, I agree with that. He is a, a better defender than Duhan is really good under the high ball, I'll give him that as well. I, I think it's, I think if you get the winners that we've got in the squad, you're not going to really complain either way. If you've got Duhan and Lewis Reece Summit on the wings or Josh Adams and Anthony Watson or Watson and Reece Summit or Adams and Van, like there's so many combinations you could do and I don't think really anyone's going to have much complaints about it. And you could always have, I've always said I'd have like Anthony Watson on the bench because he can cover fullback as well if needed. And that's always a big thing for me, having like utility players on the bench. So you're not filling up the bench of like one like specific position all the time. You have that variety if need be. Mm-hmm. No, absolutely. I, I agree with that. I mean, but that would that would also work as well if Anthony Watson started and it was Reese Sam or Duhan on the bench, and then you know, yeah. so if you could, if uh, Again, fingers crossed this would never happen. If Hoggy gets injured, then you know he could yeah. move Anthony Watson to fullback and then someone else on the on the wing. Um, but that's where like it um could favor possibly an Elliot Dalian as well. As as we were saying with Jamie George, um Elliot Daly, another one whose form recently hasn't been great, but I think he's really just there for his versatility. Obviously, he can cover the whole of the three quarter line. Um, he can yeah. also cover fullback as well. Um, yeah, um, as you're saying. Form wise, wouldn't pick him, but you know what? Um, you think uh, you think that's why Gatlin's gone for him, Elliot Daly? Well, for the versatility, definitely, yeah. Because, like, I've said this: like, if Elliot Daly's in form and playing well, he is always he is usually one of the first teams, uh, first names on that team sheet when he's playing well. It's just the fact he hasn't, and I don't know if that's because of the lack of game time he's had or. Or what? It's just it's a it's a hard thing to talk about because obviously there's only really one man that knows why he's not playing well, and and that is Daily Daily. 
Um, but I think that Gats has picked him purely because he can play centre comfortably. He can play on the wing quite well. He's he is solid enough at fullback. Maybe not on the defensive side, but he can cover good well enough at fullback. And if it's really needed, he has got that long range kicking boot on him. So if it was to come down to it, and it was like to even like get game three as like the decider, or even the, to win the series maybe, and you're like fifty meters out, and you've got Elliot Daly on the pitch, you will you would kick for goal because you know he's gonna he's he's obviously got the length for it regardless. Like obviously they not always go in, but yeah, I think that I think Gas has picked a smart pick there. I wouldn't have picked Elliot Daly. Personally, just like on form, but like looking, taking a step back and looking at what Elliot Daly can do, I, I can't like really argue with it. So, yeah, I'm quite happy with it now that I'm like thinking about it more. So, yeah, I mean, I, that's the thing. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have picked him either uh, just because of form, really. Uh, mm. And even at fullback, I'm not convinced he's, um, he's the finished article in that position at all, even though I know the argument could come back to me. Oh, he's got, in, he was. The fullback when England beat New Zealand in the Rugby World Cup, he, you know, sort of, he, you know, again, World Cup final, even though he didn't play great in the World Cup final. Um, but no, I mean, sorry, none of them did. <laughs> ah, true, true, true. That, um, was a big, that was a big question I got asked as well. Like, why wouldn't you have like a majority like England pack to go against South Africa? I was like, because it didn't work. Mm. It is. And it's not, and again, I keep, I have to keep hammering this home like nearly every video I do now. It's nothing against England or the English players. Like they are all good players. Obviously, you're, you're playing for your country at a professional sport. So you are obviously at a certain level. But if your whole pack is getting dominated by the world champions and then we're going on tour to those world champions, you're going to have to change it up. That's why. Like personally, I'd right right off the top of my head, I'd have like Rory Sutherland or Wynn Jones. Either way, you'd have one on the bench. Ken Owens and like Luke Cameron Dickey, like you said, you you'd have Tyke following at three. Like that's not even up for debate. Yeah. Alan Wynn Jones is captain, so he's obviously starting. You then you've got Maro Toji. I know he's given up a lot of penalties recently, but he seems to be a different animal on the Lions tour, which is obviously a good thing. And then the backs roll. You've got Tom Curry, Hamish Watson, mm. Sam Simmons, or Tulipi Falata. Like that's that's a dream forward pack right there. Yeah, in relation to what you're saying to that though, um, this might sound so controversial to some. I'd still I'd pick Tad Byrne over uh, Maro Itoje still at number four, just because yeah, I think right. it, I yeah. think at the choke tackle, um, Byrne offers a bit more than Itoje does there. Um, I think that could be crucial against the box having someone of that physicality is prepared to go up yeah, against no, them, and good. they know they know going they know if they're going to be charged <laughs> into him, they have to be make sure they're absolutely like crisp spot on with how they're going into contact. And if they go too high, Burns going to be capable of like holding them up and just waiting for his teammates to come in and just help him, yeah. and then they'll get the turnover. Um, so that's I mean that's that's um that's that was my pick actually for um the back five in the pack. I've gone burn uh Wynn yeah. Jones, Curry at six and Watson at seven, same as you there, and Falatau yeah. at eight. Um I think that's like you know, a real could be a really good balance. I personally expect, I mean, uh the Atoji Wynn Jones to still be the, the second row pairing with Burn at six, but that's my thoughts. I think there's you know the variety there uh, with, with Curry and Watson as the flankers as well. I think there's an R shout. Of like like what you said like with the holding up tack like tackler and Tigburn, Courtney Laws. I yeah, like he's he, he is so underrated. I got like so this came up as a question to me earlier. It was like, do you feel that like Courtney Laws is underrated? I'm like, yes. Like for what he can do, like the size of the man he is, he's a great second row. He can play back row, so that gives you that third choice line out like jumper option. He puts it like you've seen the big hits he puts in. He makes some meters. He's, I don't think I've ever really seen him go off like tired. It's more of a tactical change. Mm. He's got he's got the engine. He's he's a great player. I, I love Courtney Laws personally. Yeah, I mean that's that's just, I was gonna get on <clears throat> to get on to actually the fact that he's um, he's there. He's still injured just now, as far as I know. Still coming back from injury. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean. It seems like, you know, sort of kind of like 
more of the bolters as you as you put it. Oh, yeah. um, like obviously, I mean, I understand test experience. He's been playing test rugby for years, but I mean, yeah. as a player, um, yeah, I mean, on on form and in fitness, you would say I, I agree. Like if you can get him to that level, then you know he's an, he's definitely an excellent choice to take. Oh, yeah. Um, possibly. I mean, I personally don't see him starting starting the test. I think there are still others yeah. ahead of him, but. He's possibly like a very, very good chance of making the 23 at least, maybe on the bench. He comes on later, can make the impacts with his big tackles and like the stuff you said with his cat is carrying and you know, so just his overall all round ability. Yeah. I think the big issue was, um, um, was uh, Bundyaki. And again, it was nothing against Bundyaki. It was just very like, because obviously, like, you get like, former players and pundits and like me like people like me and yourself discussing teams and talking about like combinations and players and for the life of me I don't think his name ever came up in this like month month and a half like like we're going up to the Lions let's get a squad together and I don't think and it's not a bad thing it it just means he has kind of went under the under the rug a little bit I just feel like it really caught me off guard when I was like, Josh Adams, all right, cool. And then Bundyaki, I was like, oh, okay. And I don't, it's not that I dislike Bundyaki. I do like him. He is a great ball carrier. He's a big, like, brooding forward. And that would help, a uh, big brooding centre, sorry. And that would help in South Africa. It's just, it really caught me off guard. And, yeah, so I was going to see your thoughts on that one. Yeah, I mean, I actually did have, um, <laughs> in my uh, initial video for... Um, for the squad I would take, I had 40 in my initial squad and Bundiaki would have been there if Manu Tuolangi wasn't fit because I felt yeah. like he needed that one centre who could just really, you know, he was guaranteed to get you over the game line seven or eight times out of ten. And yeah. um, Bundiaki is one is the centre who does that. And we all know Gatland, his history with picking Jamie Roberts for Wales. He loves his, he loves his bash-up centres yeah. who are just going to, like... I, again, as I say, seven, seven or eight times out of ten, going to get you over the game line at the first or second point of attack. Yeah. Um, and that was, um, you know, in in my thinking as well that he would maybe go for him. And I'll be honest, though, the way he's the way he's talking, Gatland, about the the Aki um Henshaw partnership that played for Ireland against England in the Six Nations. Yeah. Um, he's talking really highly of that. And as much as like you or I, I think we're in agreement. We we go for Henshaw and Harris. Right now, yeah. centre pairings. Um, I feel Gatlin will go for Aki and and Henshaw. Um, yeah, because just they are just just, just just I'm just gauging that, but just by the way he's talking right now. Um, yeah. But I, I've, a lot can change in a few weeks, of course. Yeah, of course. So I think someday I can't remember who it was. I got asked. I I've gotten asked a lot of questions recently in my videos. So like my my accounts just kind of skyrocketed since the last spoke. So. It's been good. crazy. That's a good thing, mate. It's a good thing. It is, it's definitely it's quite humbling as well. So I think that when the first time I did this with you, I think I was on like 50 followers, 500 likes so like on all my videos overall. And now um at 170 odd followers and over three thousand likes, and like I'm getting over like four hundred views, and like I did a little not a jokey video, I kind of, like, I took the pictures that Scottish Rugby put up with the Lion logo and, like, Stuart Hall, Chris Harris, blah, 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 and I put them all together, put Forest Scotland behind it, called it the Great Eight, and it's got three and a half thousand views. I'm like, I, I didn't do anything there, I just slapped it together. Mm -hmm. And, like, um, there's other ones, and, like, I've just spoke about the Lion squad or, like, how I was feeling about it, and it's got like 600 views, so many likes. And I'm like, this is actually like beyond crazy now. I, I'm happy that people like my opinion, but I just kind of take a step back and like, right, this is this is real. Like people actually ask for my opinion as well. Like, so I've I can't go live, like I can't do like a live QA because you need to have I think you have to have like a thousand followers to be able to do that. Mm. So I get folk like commenting on my videos like, oh, can you do a QA? Like, no, I can't. Like, I genuinely I'm not allowed because I don't I'm not like important enough to do it. You're all on your um, way though, by the sounds of it. I'm, I'm hopefully, fingers crossed, you never know. But I'm just like, if you just want to ask me questions, like just put it in the comments that you can if you hold it, you can reply with video. So it's kind of like a mini QA. So it looks like 
I'm flooding the content page. Like I think there's like eight. If you look at it, it's like eight videos up today. Mm-hmm. But one's like a video I was going to do anyway, and seven are like answering questions. So I've kind of been doing it like that right now, and I've been getting a lot of good questions. There's not been anything. Well, there's not to me. There's no such thing as like a stupid question mm-hmm. about rugby, but you do get like kind of strange ones. So it was like. Um, drop start or bench Hamish Watson or Tom Curry and I'm like well they're both great players but one's a six one's a seven like that's not yeah you see you see um Tom Curry more as a six yeah I, I do personally yeah mm. and okay, it was just I mean like... I, yeah no I mean I think um with what he does he's a bit more of a seven but you think there because he, he can play at six there'd be an excellent balance there with both them. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, both Curry and Mish, six and seven, like you could yeah. both can jackal. Um, Tom Curry, I think, would be a bit more a- a- up athletic, like, you know, sort of more up top. Um, Hamish Watson could be um, like a bit nifty, a bit niftier, and like, you know, can come across like he's got a bit of a lower center of gravity. And yeah. uh, yes, he can stand up against the big boys, regardless of yes, what useless can. journalists like Stephen Jones say. Um, yeah. All right. I think it was you that put it in the forum. I read it and went, that's a lot of rubbish. I've never heard so much rubbish in my life. Because mm-hmm. the whole, like, I mean... I well, he's now, he's, uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt you, Murray. He's now, he's now saying, right. oh, I wouldn't have taken Stuart Hogg because, you know, <gasps> Fath de Klerk with his box kicking. And, you know, if Fath de Klerk was the nine, he'd be like, yes, they're taking Stuart Hogg and putting him as first choice coolback because of his ability under the high ball. And I'm just like, you know... The thing that baffles me is that I'm gonna say that twat is like fucking fucking paid to write and say the shit that he does, and he's been a journalist for like the best part of 20, 30 years. And it's like you're still fucking paid for this, and yet there's likes of you and I and many others across the internet who like give our opinions and yet offer far more insight than he does. And I make no apologies whatever for whatsoever for saying that or thinking that. It's like you know I mean, these don't, fucking don't journalists. Hold back, Sorry. Don't hold back, Kyle. <laughs> oh no, no, I'm absolutely like you know, say what, say what I think, and um, down the road if he does fight, he does find me somewhere. I'm like, yeah, come on, I'll challenge you on everything you've got to say. So um, I've lost my choice. I thought no, because <laughs> sorry, sorry, mate. Sorry. Oh, it's all right. Um, no, so like on my videos, you get questions, and a lot of them have been good, and like, oh, like, what's my thoughts on like? One came up, and I kind of just like. Mm-hmm. I've told you this since we st- I started doing these and I was like how do you feel about sex and not being in the team and I'm like it doesn't bother me like I'd said he wasn't going to be in it mm-hmm. you's, you's argued it till you were blue in the face I stood by it I don't I don't be smug or arrogant with stuff like that because like again like I'm not I don't feel like I'm the most knowledgeable mm-hmm. I feel like you're always you're always should always be learning yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I'm the I'm the same. I don't. I mean, I don't pretend to be an expert. I just say what I think, and if folk agree with me, that's fine. If they don't, that's, yeah, that's, that's what I'm fine. saying. Like, <laughs> I have had like there was somebody who commented, and I think I actually made a video of it, and it was like the best rugby TikTok. I'll find it now, actually. Well, just while I'm being not, so I'm not making it up or lying about it. Um, yeah, where is it now? It was a big thank you. I've lost it. There's so many. <laughs> ah, no, I went too far back now. Sorry, Kyle. <laughs> no worries. Come on. Thank you. There it is. So it was like, I've never seen a TikToker who actually has this class knowledge. And I was just like, that's so, like, it's really nice for somebody to say, like, I'm not near like the followers to get like a live Q&A mm. or get a blue tick or anything like that. So it's just like, I, like, I don't get paid for anything I do. Mm. And to get comments like that, and then like I was like, thank you very much. And like you read the comments, like you click on the comments on it. And it's like, I agree, definitely one of the best unbiased and brilliant rugby TikTokers I've seen. And I'm just like, thank you. Like, thank you so much. So like I could do that now as well, just, Anyone listening to my stuff and me, I was literally just me rambling on about rugby, voicing my opinions. And if you like that, and just thanks, just thanks, even to yourself, just like 
thanks for like having me on this and getting my voice out there a bit more and just yeah <laughs> yeah no i mean absolutely i mean <laughs> i mean last time like you know so i enjoyed having you on because it just felt like more a general chat and i could yeah because there's some sometimes i do feel like you know i have to have a line of questions like i need to like just structurally ask folk but again i feel like that can be i prefer to see that more as a guideline like you know it's sort of and yeah. sometimes you just have to see like if it just goes into a general chat it can just flow from there that's sometimes mm -hmm. sometimes better sometimes it appeals to folk and um, some folk prefer um to listen to again like you know sort of certain things and the thing yeah. is with podcasts and um, is that you know sort of again this comes i think depend how profile you are there's some folk that would listen to you like the whole thing there's other folks just taking wee bits or some folk yeah. prefer to listen to short segments etc so yeah all all a question of uh, differences but no i'm glad you're doing well there mate and obviously you're well on your way to your 1k so you'll be on there don't worry about <laughs> don't worry about that you'll be <laughs> enough. um yeah but no and obviously it was a, always a pleasure to have you on and uh you know hopefully yeah, no. you um but now uh, is there anything else you think we we'll talk about um uh, maybe Alan Wynne Jones as captain. I think he was the obvious choice. I know there's a couple of folks who said, like, oh, he's he's past it, he's too old, he's not as good as he once was. And again, I mean, I personally I know understand he's four years older now, but back in 2017, I was saying similar things, like you know, so because I thought, oh no, he's not as good as he once was. So, and then the 2017 tour, he had like you know, he played brilliantly and then after that he's arguably played the best rugby of his career up until going into the world 2019 world cup so yeah what your thoughts, thoughts on on alan win it was a definite choice like i said uh i think every majority of people said it that alan win jones it has to be the captain who else is it going to, like, no disrespect to like any of the other candidates like i've always said to get a lions captain your shortlist would be like the hope nation's captain so like alan win jones Sexton, Farrell, and Hogg. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing against, like, I love Sir Hogg. I'm a, I am a big Johnny Sexton fan. You might not think that about the way I've been talking. Um, and Owen Farrell, like, he is a good captain. Like, he, he is quite a vocal captain, but... Yeah, I don't think... I don't think... I personally disagree. This is where we're going to disagree a bit. I don't think Owen Farrell's a great captain. He's a good captain. A captain. Um, he's a good captain when his teams are doing well and they're winning. <laughs> when they're not doing so well... And when, you know, that to me is when your team's not doing so well, that's what makes a great captain is when yeah. you have the ability to really step up and then you drag the lesser likes along with you or you drag, or you just say like, right, guys, we're like, you know, we're doing this like this and you yeah, are course, yeah, sticking yeah. to your jobs and you're do doing it. He doesn't do that. He just seems to carry on with his own thing and players just don't seem as inspired to really get as motivated when the things aren't going as well. It's like Martin Johnson, for example, perfect example of this. <laughs> And um, even that, even Alman Jones does this for Wales, like that mm -hmm. ability, and um, just to say when you're on the back foot, like you know, um, an example I can think of that is um, when England played New Zealand in 2003 in in New Zealand when they beat them 15-13. Um, I know it was a while back, but so it was one time where I think England were down to 30 men or 40 men, and they had the scrum on their own five meter line or some, something. I'm I'm maybe getting the details not as correct as I could do. <laughs> Um, but and, and Martin Johnson basically just said to the, the limited pack that England had on the pitch that time, you get down there and you shove and you shove and you shove. Yeah. It's like you are not letting your teammates down here. I mean, even when like Martin Johnson speaks, as we've seen in Lions documentary, it's like, you know, look, you know, I don't care. Like, you know, sir, if your head gets kicked in here, you put yourself over that ball and you yeah. do it for your teammates, you know, sort of you're going to be <clears> in pain, you're going to be breathing out your arse, but it's good, you're going to have to. You know, you, but at the end of the day, you're going to be, you know, sort of knowing you have not let any of your teammates down. You are not letting your teammates down. And that was, yeah. that's to me is what makes a great captain, that ability just to say like, look, you know, you are doing this and you are not letting anyone on this pitch who is wearing the felt, same journey as, as you down and you're not letting your fan mate face down. And that is like, yeah, final. I wouldn't know. It's like, well, it was more I mean like not a great, not not a great captain, but he. Sorry is, if I came across a bit intimidating. No, no, that's cool. It's all good. You mentioned <laughs> Mark Johnson. That's intimidating on its own. Um, <laughs> no, so like, I think he is quite a vocal. Like, he is very talkative. Maybe not the most like encouraging or like sort of captain, but like you do see his mouth going a lot. And I don't know. I feel like that is a strong point. Of Owen Farrell. I don't know if it's just because he's been a general bitch or. 
but I th- I'd I'll, say I'll, somewhere I'll, in the middle there. <laughs> well, I will give him his due. Like, he is a very vocal player. Yeah. Um, um, Stuart Hogg, um, I would say phenomenal captain. I've said it for years. It was like I'm, I'm obviously usually at like all the Scotland games anyway, and just you see it when you start to go more, you start to notice it, and like. I think it was like a, I can't remember how long ago it was, but Hoggy was at fullback as he normally is. And there was a penalty for a scrum, and Hoggy's like, "Yes, boys!" And he like he ran up and like slapped like the slap on the head and let's go and all that. And I'm like, "That's what a captain should be." Absolutely. And, it was, and again, it was nothing against like Greg Wadelaw or John Barclay thing because they were like great captains in their own right. But when I was looking at it, I was like. Because I always try and like think forward as well as like as far as I can. Mm. So and I was like, I can see Stuart Hogg being captain. So when they were like World Cup captain, Stuart McAnally, I was like, um, okay. It's nothing against McAnally. He, he is the Edinburgh captain, and yeah. it was for, it was deserved at the time. And then it came out that like, Gregor Townsend was going to change the captain for the Six Nations. I was like, it's got to be Stuart Hogg. Like, and then some I can't remember who it was. Somebody done a toss up like it's gonna be Stuart Hogg or Finn Russell, and it was obviously Hoggy. And then somebody then tried to make the the rumor that that's why that whole Gregor Finn happened because yeah, Finn that's a load, of, that was a load of rubbish like, in the end, wasn't like, it? No, it's because they don't like each other. <laughs> well, but, yeah, so I mean, like, thankfully, made the differences now. Yeah. Yeah, but like comparing like the home nations captains, and then you've got Alan Jones. It's leaps and bounds. Like he's been there, he's done it, he's won everything. Like there is no greater captain in the modern era, for the Norman Northern Hemisphere side of things anyway, to be the captain. Like obviously, if you could pick a world captain, it would be Richie McCaw. Like all day, every day, sort of. But right. like I think a close second in the like in. World rugby, you'd have Alan Lynn Jones as your captain. His leadership skills is just it's out of this world. You see him, doesn't matter what the scoreline is. Wales give up apparently, right? Everyone in, let's have this discussion now before we bugger it up more. And like you've seen his face when they got beat by France. I wasn't upset. It was it was pissed. He was pissed off. And that's like whether it's your first cap or your hundred and 50th, whatever Alan Wynne Jones is on now, 152, I think it is. Yeah, yeah. Whatever, you see it in um, every game, in the anthem, the the, the emotions pouring out of him, like, that is a captain. Like, if you were to draw up a captain, that is is Alan Wynne Jones. Absolutely. And uh, just that also, just the way every coach he's ever worked under, just speak about him, like, you know, sort of the work ethic he put in, puts in. Yeah. Just that they, they even say like just how easy he is to coach because you know you don't have to tell him really anything you know sort of he just knows he just knows what to like you know what he has to do and how to get on with his job and I think that's I mean I keep I keep saying that about Alman Jones he's the perfect example for any more modern professional sportsman just the way oh. he handles himself both on yeah. and off the pitch because yeah. uh, as we know like folk who are in the limelight they you know may may look like all all glamorous and brilliant on the surface, but off the pitch, they probably have a lot of problems going on. The thing about yeah. Alan Jones, he doesn't seem to have that, or at least not to my knowledge, like, you know, yeah, just no, how, he, how he seems to, how he seems to handle himself is just absolutely exempt of someone you think, you know, this guy is like the model professional. He's dedicated to his craft in this case, being a rugby player, of course, like, you know, and just the way he goes about his day to day life and every coach he's worked under all say like, you know, oh, he's just, he's probably one of the easiest players I've ever had to ever worked with. Cause you know, he's just going to give you a hundred percent every time he play, every time mm-hmm. he goes on the training pitch and every time he goes on to the match day pitch. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I think that a good talking part of it is the only like news that's really ever came out of Alan Wynn Jones is that Jake Ball punched him. That's it. Like there's well, not Jay, been any. Jay Paul, Jay Paul seems to love to and um, uh, try and no knock country. everyone out. Faf de Clerk, he got away with it recently. So, uh, Jay Ball never forgets then, because that was from the World Cup that Faf wound him up. So, well, no, I'm, ta- I'm talking a bit more recently with um, oh, the champion. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Charlotte Sale doesn't... came where he just absolutely. You think that you know what Xander Fagerson <laughs> got red carded for in the Six Nations? Then you just think like what Jake Paul got away with. He just absolutely yeah. smashed the clerk's head in, and you just got he, he, some some 
flopping now. Managed to, you know, get no, off. That's, the- that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, so that all started because Jake Ball went for Faf at the World Cup, and Faf just laughed it off. So it's like Jake Ball never forgets, and then he absolutely yeah, kills just, him. And, yeah, yeah, sorry, so really, catch on there. That's no, fine. And then like absolutely kills him and gets away with murder, essentially. Pretty much, yeah. But like, like I said, like you see, like. Maybe not, maybe not even with Stuart Hogg, really, either. You, you see, like, big-name rugby players or just athletes and, like, oh, they've been out drinking or caught in, like, a drug bust or some shit like that or cheated on their missus. Alan Jones is never in any of that. And, again, like I just said, like, the only thing that came out, apart from being on the pitch, is he got punched by Jake Ball. Right? Yeah. Jokes on, j- jokes on Jake Ball. You just... You essentially just punched God. Yeah. Well, well, Welsh, God in Wales, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, Welsh God, yeah. And who yeah. got punished for it? <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. You know I mean? Yeah, but, yeah no, exactly. And I think, I mean, again, I think, I mean, I personally think, like, you know, looking into those kind of things that probably a training bust up or, yeah, Scarlet, pardon me, the Scarlets played the Ospreys one time. It's, it's kind of stuff I think it should be. Well, more on the pitch, and I yeah. don't think like that's something to look too per- too too deep into. In nah, my opinion, I never, when you hear like training ground bust ups, you never really look into it because at yeah. the end of the day, it's you get the adrenaline. Even in training, you get your adrenaline going. Mm-hmm. If a teammate does something wrong, you will. Oh, what, what are you doing? Come on! And then if the, their testosterone or adrenaline's up as well. Mm-hmm. No, it's just it's just nature. It's two like alpha males, button heads, a pe- a, f- a fist or the odd like headbutt or kick or like a push and a shove. That's always going to happen. But if you can come up uh, once it's all cooled down, if you can shake hands and like share a beer or whatever afterwards, then maybe not now because of COVID. But you know what I mean. Like you could if you could come off the pitch and shake hands and let it like leave it on like leave your shit at the door essentially. Mm. That's what that's what's great, and I think that's why Alan when June stands out, like it happened. Him and Jake are good; like they still speak, still play together. You know what I mean? Like it hasn't hasn't like tarnished anyone's career at all, or mm-hmm. just Absolutely. happens that it just happens that Jake Ball landed an absolute peach. <laughs> no, abs- absolutely, absolutely, and uh, well, that's the thing. Like always with rugby, is like I think the general philosophy: you keep your you know stuff keep that stuff on the pitch off the pitch yeah. you, know, you have a beer afterwards etc and um yeah um again that's um the the thing like you know i think uh, generally again a lot of this stuff if it gets leaked out to the media it can always be inflamed to be more than it actually is yeah, yeah. And training ground bust ups i mean even in in football i remember seeing interviews with graham soonest saying this like you know sort of some of the trade the train and um, training sessions he was in when he played for Liverpool um, you know so he said like there were times when they were just like you know sort of butting heads or like having clashes and you think it's not always a bad thing just having a bit of a just sometimes let, letting it blow over letting them having a little bit of a blowout on you know sort of a training ground if you like just saying like you know sort of ah uh, uh, you know sort of ah uh, F you you're not doing this I and then just like a little bit of a scrap and then afterwards like everyone's cooled down you think okay like then we can go into a bit more of the nuanced side of things and I think with yeah. social media spell as well these days, sometimes it's just looked at the sort of the camera just gets the bust up and then that's all everyone sees and then it's all because yeah. oh my god, everything's gone wrong. And it's like, well, you're yeah. not looking at the full context of the yeah. picture, if you know what I mean. Yeah, no, that's fair. Are you do you have anything to ask me, Kyle, at all? Um yeah, just in relation to um, you know, sort of your stuff with them. Um, uh, bl- blissful uh, rugby HQ and what you're doing yeah. on TikTok and um, you know sort of obviously if they've got anything else you want to talk about with relation to the Lions etc um, or any rugby in general um, yeah so I, I had my name when, when I first started doing videos it was just my name and my date of birth because mm. I'd, I'd, I'd just kind of done it just more as a confidence boost I wasn't I wasn't like expecting folk to like comment and share and all that sort of thing and it kind of took a little bit of like I had some like popular videos the last time we spoke, and ever since then I've kind of had like a like a stable, like a, like a fan base almost, and then in the last 
week, maybe. It's just kind of... I wouldn't say skyrocketed because, like I said, like I've not, I'm nowhere near it, like in the big mix at all. Mm. Uh, but like Rugby Pass liked one of my videos. Yeah, yeah. Well, well done for that, mate. I, think, I, don't, I don't think they should have liked the one that they did like, but I'm not complaining. I'm happy with it. It was they liked my unpopular opinions. I'm like, yeah. surely, surely, like a news. <laughs> company like well Shindra. well still i mean you're going out your way to put your opinion out there and yeah again if, if there might be someone underneath that thinks i can see where he's coming from yeah so i've had that a few times in my videos as well like you know some folk just maybe i wouldn't expect to say something that i again as i said i wouldn't expect to and then they just come up and say you know sort of oh, yeah got a fair point there so yeah so funny, just because you've mentioned, like, ah, yeah, go for it. So, like, like I've been like, getting asked a lot of questions recently because I want, I'd love to do a Q and A. Like, I'd love to just sit down for like half an hour or an hour on like a Friday night, unless I'm invited back here. Um, but like, just sit and like the fans like put in the comments, ask questions, and I can just rattle them off straight away like that. But obviously, like TikTok, you have guidelines, like you have to have so many followers and X, Y, and Z to do that. I'm not near that yet. Hopefully one day I can, but I'm do I'm letting like I'm still letting people comment. I'm not I've never blocked comments or blocked anyone off it. Mm. I've had to I try not to bite. So I do if I get like stupid comments or that, I just hit them with the that's that's your opinion and kind of just leave it at that. Um, but no, I've been letting like a lot of people ask me a lot of questions. I've got some like bigger rugby talk tech talkers. That's kind of hard to say. Mm. Some mm. other uh, people that do rugby tech talk uh, follow me back. Like, I followed them before I started doing videos because I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. It's rugby. Give them a follow sort of thing. And then they follow me and they ask for my opinion. And it, it is really good. It's quite a lot of fun. I'd, if I wasn't having fun, I wouldn't be doing it, sort of thing. Um, but yeah, so like somebody asked me if I was Gregor Townsend, what would my start in like Scotland team be? And I was like, not really much to change. Like Gregor has kind of got this like squad down to almost like a T. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like Sutherland at the moment it'd be Turner, but if he's fit, McAnally or Brown, Fagerson, Johnny Gray, uh, Scott Cummins if he's healthy, if not Sam Skinner. Mm. Jamie Ritchie, Hamish Watson, I think Matt Ferguson, because of his age, has that number eight clamped down. Mm. That's my uh, Ali Price, Finn. As, again, if he's fit and healthy, Cameron Redpath, if not Sam Johnson, Chris Harris or Hugh Jones, Duhan, Van der Merve on one wing, Darcy Graham, Sean Maitland, or even Byron McGuigan, because he's been turning up in the Prem on the other. And then Stuart Hogg, at fullback and somebody commented I agree with all of that but I'd start Maitland over Graham and I went and I think I replied with I'd put Maitland on the bench as with Hugh Jones because they can cover multiple positions and the reply was yeah that makes more sense just go with what you said <laughs> so, the thing is you're missing out of 10 there though because you, if you've had both Maitland and Jones on the same bench then but I mean, you yeah, I suppose you could, suppose you could come back with the argument that Cammy Redpath played ten in his youth. Um, sure, although... I could play ten. Sorry. Sure, oh I yes, of course, ten. of course, yes. Very, very fair point there. Yes. So, <laughs> although although but, um, he's not going to get away with uh, the same mistake. Well, this, the um, against Italy, he's going to be able to get away with a bit more than he would against one of the top teams. Yeah, of course, yeah. I think they've all played. I think Sam Skinner played ten at youth. I heard that. That made me laugh. Because apparently Our there's like a, there's like there's, there's, there's a clip of him kind of doing like a like a Johnny Hill. I'm calling it that now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and well, I think I think um, Ali Williams was doing it like uh, 15 years before. Uh, I think 2006. I remember when he played for the All Blacks against Wales. He yeah. kicked about 60 meters up pitch, like you know. Absolutely beautiful punt kick, perfectly placed, went like hit hit his mark where it was going to go into touch. But I think it was a outside the 22, so sort of bounced out before it went into touch. Oh, right, yeah. Absolutely perfectly placed and just 
know. I mean, let's let's be honest. There's no forward with a better kick than Keith Woods because that was absolutely Keith Woods, yes. yes. That yeah. kick, that it was a clearance kick as well. Mm-hmm. And then they went to like the, the opposition twenty two. Right. Like, That's crazy. That I think it was just like, oh. give me the ball. Yeah, well, Keith, yeah. Wood, Keith Wood was always a kind of freak player, both with like just how he's running and his kick and his kicking. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, no, so like, like I've been saying, like I've been asked a lot of questions, a lot of different questions, never this really the same one. You do get the odd, similar question. I just kind of I've said that in a previous video, but I don't want to be like a dick about it, so I will have I, I do happily answer them again. Mm. Um, I, I've been asked a lot about George Ford recently, and I was like, "Yeah, like George Ford, like couldn't do any more than what he did, like especially with that uh, Leicester Ulster game." Mm-hmm. I, I thought he was absolutely well, and I said if it was based on that game alone, George Ford would be my Lions ten. Mm. But in the grand scheme of things, Dan Beggar's a better ten. Finn Russell's to me a better ten. Maybe not in the conventional way, but Finn's a better 10. If if he's fit, Sexton's better than both of them, if he's fit. And I've always said that. And then you've got Owen Farrell that could play 10. And I think in the Lions, you would have Owen Farrell over George Ford. So that became a, that was a big talking point. And then there was other ones as well. Like you get the you get really good questions and you get the odd like Snyder mark. I think my favorite one yesterday after the Lions squad was announced, it was like Nope, not going to win this series. Too much uh, Scottish and Welsh. They don't know how to beat t- uh, Tier 1 nations. And I'm sitting there like, you are aware Wales won the Six Nations? Or they have beat Tier 1 nations. And you are aware that... Yeah, they, beat, got... yeah, they beat South Africa um, three of the last four times they've played them. So, yeah. They're not Tier 1, though. All right. I, I, don't know what, I don't know what he was meaning though. He never explained that. I was just like, I, I mean, you oh, get you, you get a fault like that. It'll just say, oh, I don't know, just say stuff, stuff they do, and it seems to be to be provocative. But it's like uh, to me, it's like it's it's whatever. Folk are entitled yeah. to say what they say their opinions, and yeah, yeah. My favorite one that it really caught me off guard because when I was like, right guys, I'd like you to ask me questions, and I will try my best to as like, answer them like, as best I can. And they're usually like, like, what's your thoughts on Six Nations? Who's your favourite player? Like X, Y, and they're like kind of, not repetitive, but current questions is what I'm going for. And somebody put out, what's your opinion on Israel Folau? I was like, Jesus. I was like, that's a name from the past. I was like, well, on the, like, on the pitch, absolutely phenomenal player, would fit into any team in the world based on just as in-game ability but as a role model he should have kept his puss shut he didn't <laughs> I got him in the bad books he then stuck by his guns and yeah he is just a, he's just a nasty man yeah yeah um... and that was, that's all I could say and I was and then like you had folk like oh what did he do and I'm like I made like homophobic and like racist remarks and then tried to sue the company for Unfair dismissal and all that rubbish, but that's in the past now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't one to go into that too much. I think he was oh, no. um, quite, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I think, I, yeah, he, he just uh, Israel Falaus is a dick, in my opinion. I just think he, yeah. the way, oh, the way, the way, he doubled, the way uh, it was more the way he doubled down mar- rather than the thing that caused like so much whip up that kind of yeah. me more, just like. Just again, like obviously, he gets a backlash. Understandable. The uh, it, this is a side issue from rugby, but it's again the whole issue of heaven and hell. To me, there's no proof of that. So, like you know, how does how does he know? And the fact like he's probably had a few you know boozy nights out himself. You know, in rugby, we've all done that. You yeah. think you think um you know sort of like okay, if you're you've been probably drunk plenty of times in your life aren't you going to hell as well if that's the case by your, yeah. your standards so, and um so, so that big controversial post that he i think he's still not deleted it i think it's still up if yeah. you go up for it don't want to but i'm just saying i think it is still out there mm. and I'm, i read some of it and i'm like right okay like, i get that that's part of like your religious belief and i'm not i'd never take that away from anyone 
what you believe in is that's entirely up to you. I've nothing to do with me. But like the no drinking and this and that, I'm like I'm a bit of a hypocrite. Like you're a rugby boy, like we've all like, like you've just said, like we've all done it. Mm. But yeah, no, I do love questions like that, especially I love getting asked questions that like kind of catch me off guard or ones that I have to maybe think more about. So like I got asked your current favorite player, favorite retired player, overrated player, and underrated player. And I'm like, oh, right, okay then. Yeah. So that was kind of not a hard one. I, I had to kind of like think like realistically as well. So I was like, so like right now, Stuart Hogg, Sam Simmons, or Hamish Watson are my favorite. But currently at the moment, I'm really enjoying Damien McKenzie. Yeah. And rugby. So I'd say, I saw went, so I'll say him. And then I was like, my favorite retired player, I went, Obviously, like your Dan Carters, your Matt Anonis. Matt Anonis was my first ever like international player out of Scotland that I looked up to. Mm, okay. And then like Dan Carter's obviously be, been a big factor in my life. Like my, my son's named after Dan Carter, so and um, that says it all Good really. Choice. And, then, mm. and then like then like Richie McCaw and like Brian Habana and all that. But I was like, but really growing up, my first player that I wanted to be was Chris Patterson. Okay. And like and like I was I've been lucky enough to meet Chris a few times and it's quite it's quite humbling. Like I met him at the 2015 World Cup launch and like a proper like fanboy. I was like, holy shit, it's Chris Patterson. I was like, Can I get a photo? Can you sign my top? This and that. He's like, yeah, no worries, got a photo of him. Hadn't seen him since then. And then done the 2019 like World Cup launch. And he was the first person I've seen. And obviously I was a bit older. I was a bit more comfortable speaking to people. And I went, Chris, is it okay if you like sign my top and I get a photo with you? He's like, yeah, of course, no worries. And after the photo, I was like, I've actually been lucky enough to meet, meet you before. I, like, I met you at the last World Cup once. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah. He's like, you had the blue. Like, you remember the top I had on and everything. I was like, that's, that's class. And before COVID, I met him at one of the open like training sessions that the team does yeah the older one and again like can you sign this big like can i get a picture big fan of yours and he was like and i, I even said like i did like watch you growing up he's like oh that's nice he's like usually it's just the mums that remember me <laughs> and i kind of <laughs> laughed at him. and i was like all right okay and he was like you were at the world cup launch weren't you i was like yeah i was like and i like you've signed my top and you've signed my last two like tops that i get the team to sign you've signed the ball today and he's like that's good, man. Like keep it going. Like and it was he's like quite a like down to earth guy. And like you don't need like, it's Chris Patterson that like, you could look beneath me if you wanted to, if you, like, if you really wanted to or that. Yeah. But and um, yeah, so I was I was really chuffed. Like I, I still kind of fanboy out like in the inside, like it is Chris Patterson, but no, nah, okay, I'm cool. I don't like scream, I don't like freak out or that. So yeah, yeah. No, I mean, like, I always thought, like, you know, Chris Patterson was one of our better players in an era where we were mostly, mostly pretty bad. I'll be honest. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. But no, he, his his boot kept us in so many games, uh, won us a few as well. So no, I mean, you know, he's, he's the reason I uh, bought a kicking tee. <laughs> so, and it's, it's as simple as that. Like, yeah, like Dan Carter and like obviously Johnny Wilkinson as well was and Ron O'Gara was like big names looking up to as well but I think just like you look back at, you always like you remember your first I know it's different context on different things but you always remember your first and like my first idol it was Chris Patterson so yeah I wear that like as a like a, a little badge of honour sort of thing so <laughs> no that's really really cool mate um yeah absolutely uh but yeah um I think well more or less leave it there. Is there anything else you want to want to add at all? Or like yeah, you know? no, it was been pretty good. It was quite a nice flow, especially about the Lions and a lot of debates. We've been not really debates, like just different opinions more like and we're both happy that the Scottish boys got represented. I think I'm a bit more happy about Sam Simmons than you, but that's probably just my chief fan bursting out of me. But well I'd I'd pick, I'd definitely pick him over um over Billy Vunipola, absolutely. So yeah, no, and on form he deserves to go, and uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, 
So well, well done, Tim. And uh, yeah, no, but again, good to have you on, mate. And uh, thank you very much thank for you, for chatting away. Um, but yeah, if if that's all we've got to chat about, um, you know, thank you very much for watching, guys. If you've stuck around this long, or if you've gone through little bits of it, that's absolutely fine as well. Take care of yourselves, and I'll catch you later on.